still like to uh, thank the great for that, or that's okay to keep it. Yes. 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 Would you feel like I change your grade for that, or yeah. you want to stick to that? I, I want to change it, that's just when it's Okay, so leave that to me, okay. that, that I'm going to change it. Okay. No problem. Okay? Good. Uh, Chi Wai Chan. Wen Lam. Dong Yong An. Oh, I like that book. Good. Uh, Oksana, great, really good, very good. Uh, Adrian, very good, good program. Uh, Sylvia uh, is not here, Sylvia won, she's gonna join us late. And, uh, uh, Jeff, Make it bigger font, so really hard to do. Oh, sorry. Okay, really hard. Even you can magnify it over that little bit. Okay. Su so, Yin Yuan is not here. And Jia Yu Chen is not here. And Sylvia Wang is not here. Okay, guys, let's start. Uh, some of the students sent me email and said they have. Uh, some problem regarding some of the students send me email and they have some problems regarding providing shell script. Uh, uh, I told you you don't need to use shell script. You could use whatever language you know. This course is not the very first course in computer science, right? It means somebody from high school cannot come and take this course, unless that person has taken at least one or two courses before. Any course that you are taking into, as an introductory course you know, should give you some knowledge about programming, like C++ programming, or Java programming, or web programming, or the Python programming, whatever language you know, I have no problem with that. Uh, some of you like to use Java, go for it. Some of you want to use shell script, go for it. I am ready to help you any way which you want because I know all of these languages. All you need to do is let me know what your uh, approach is, what language you want to use, and I'm going to give you the rest of the help that you want. Okay? You can always come to my office, you could send me an email, send your code, uh, talk about whatever you want. Uh, you know, these are, these are pretty simple subjects, really. Uh, the most important part of this course is learning uh, uh, the, how to be a DBA, okay? How to be a database administrator. Uh, but we are doing some extra jobs, like doing script or writing Java code or something, just to learn and facilitate actually our jobs, right? I told you, you have to do this at, at, you, at work, otherwise, 24 hours at work would not be even enough for you, okay? You have to take <laughs> your bed at work and 24 hours sit there and, and work still, you are behind, okay? And no company can handle that kind of slowness. You need to automate your tasks, right? And automation is up to you. You could do any language that you want, use any language. But I am anyway ready to help you, okay? Uh, some of the students, uh, uh, sent me email and uh, told me that they uh, have found out that uh, how important this course is, is in industry. Yes, if you go and search for a job, you see many companies now are looking for somebody who knows database in a level of administration, okay? Like this course, okay? There are many jobs out there. You learn this, let me know, I'm gonna uh, uh, send you for, for interview, okay? Uh, but one of the things that you need to know when you are working in any company these days is uh, always be positive. Let me explain to you what it means. Uh, you know, I am a CEO of my company, you guys know that, and many people are working for me. 
uh, I have not seen anybody in my level in any company that would handle no. Just this bad word, no. Okay. Do you know such and such subject? Uh, uh, that is bad. That is bad. We, what I'm saying with we is CEOs and managers and stuff like that. Do not like to hear, <clears throat> or do not like to hear, I don't know. You are a mighty person in my company. It means you always know everything. Even though if you don't know, you should say, I know. Okay? Every company wants this kind of employee. Not a negative person that, upon very simple burden in front, gets so unhappy and says, no, this is not the job for me. Maybe I need to switch to another company. Maybe I have to resign. And all of these kind of childish things that easily you cannot handle. Okay? No company can handle. So if you want to work in any company, you should tell yourself that you are a mighty person. It means no matter what you are able to do, okay? So I give you a project. You are working for, for example, a company. You are going to do it, okay? You have a problem, we are going to help you. You need mentor, we are going to provide for you. You need to learn, we are going to send you to university. We are going to send you to some to take some courses to learn. These are all possible. But if you constantly be negative and say, I cannot do it, this is not this, this is not that impossible for me, this kind of thing, this is not the way that high tech companies uh, would work these days, okay? Understand what I'm talking about? So you are a mighty person. Always think I'm a mighty person. So, exactly. Now let's go back to the subject. Some of you are doing very good job. Some of you, not, not very good job, but that's fine. I am here, you are here, your internet is available, people downstairs are available. There are many different resources that are available for you to help you to learn, right? And if you knew this kind of thing, you wouldn't be here. So I assume that if you do, if you are here, it means you want to learn, right? And I'm re really ready to help you, okay? So. You all work together and you're going to do this. Share your problem with me, I'm going to help you. Okay? Fair enough? Come to me. My office is down there. Always available. Always. Whenever you want to come, come over there. Normally, uh, I leave my company around uh, maybe quarter to six because it's a very heavy traffic from Silicon Valley to here. And around a little bit after six, I'm going to be in school. Okay? So, if you come by between 6.30 and 7, I'm always available to you. Come on now, get over, come over there, chat with me, anything, okay? And I'm going to help you. Bring your problems, maybe you have a computer over there, okay? I'm going to help you. Uh, send me an email, I'm available 24 hours, almost up to 4 in the morning every night, okay, every morning. So you could, no, no problem. Okay. Uh, now, one of the, uh, oh, is she? Finally, she got. You're not late. <laughs> I, I responded mm -hmm. back to you. You oh, said, you. I wasn't going to be late or something. You know, you are not there. I was just talking. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let me give you back your number. So you're not late. Uh, Sylvia, right? Yes. Relax. Yes. <coughs> yeah. Okay. You just have them stop. Just rambling around. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, one of the things that uh, I remember is a couple of students had a problem with was uh, a, a students, a couple of students, wanted to create an account. Part of the homework assignment was what? Creating an account, right? And they wanted to make sure that the account that you are making is not already made, right? If account is already there, it means you should not make it again, right? You're going to get error. So, how to check if the account is, was already, is already created, right? If you remember, you guys made show users, right? Okay, show you. I assume that you made. Now, if you have not made show users, 
Let me know, I'm gonna give you a copy of it. Okay? You haven't done homework number one? Fine. I'm gonna give you the solution for that. So you're gonna use show users in your homework assignment number two to find out if the users are already there or not. Okay? So how to do that? Okay? Give me that ID. Let's say I make a function and I call it the name of this function is create account. Create account, okay? So I'm going to make a function and I'm going to call it create. Let's say ACCT, okay? This is a function. This function would accept the user ID, okay? So I'm going to, for example, say create account followed by JLEN05. It's a user ID. So create account, it's gonna accept this, and it's trying to create this account. Two things would happen. If this account already exists, or if this account doesn't exist, we're gonna create it, right? So here, inside this function, we need to find out if this exists, don't create it, otherwise create it, right? Everybody's following? Okay, let's, let's now make this function. In ShiverScript, you do it like that. In Java, almost the same as that. In many languages like this, okay? So, create account. The, uh, this create account would accept only one argument, and that argument is what? Use name of the user, right? The JLN05. So, uh, I'm gonna say, uh, uh, let's say, uh, user ID equals dollar sign Dollar sign one is the item that you pass, right? JLEN. No? User ID is that, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look over all of the accounts that I have you know, in my system. If I see, like if, I can, if I can find this, it means the account is there. Otherwise, I'm going to create it, right? So, to do that, the best way is to make a look, right? Okay? To make a look. For let's say you in dollar sign, uh, we, we need to run uh, our show user. So show users and my calling. Okay, so this means. Show users gonna give me the listing of all of the users, and you is gonna be one of them. The first one, second one, third one. Okay. So, if it is there, it means what? We don't do anything, right? So, if I'm going to use two of Dollar sign user ID equal okay. equal equal dollar sign you it means what? Item is already there. Don't do anything right away exit the program. Right? Don't create it. So if it is, then, then what? Then, uh, uh, return, or exit, or whatever, right? Return. Is not there. Now we need to do what? Create. 
And now we're going to go and create, we're going to use, uh, for example, uh, create user, or you could use the, the client, or whatever command you guys want to do that. Grant all, whatever, you know the command, and finish. Right? So this is the function that I have, okay? So whenever you call this function, let's say I want to use, I want to use, I'm going to do it like that. Create a C C T, let's say app, fine. I'm going to create account for apps, okay? Apples is gonna come over here, user ID is apples. You're gonna go through what? All of the users which you have, if you see apples is there, don't do anything, return right away. Otherwise continue. Go over and over and over and over. Finally, loop is finished. If loop is finished and I am still here, it means what? Apples is not created. Time to create, account for. See that? Yeah. One thing on that. Let's say if you like two users, the first one does, doesn't have and the second one have. Because the loop's gonna be done and then you're gonna create after that. I think when the loop is finished, it means we need to create, right? Let me give you an example. Suppose show you, when you are running show users, you're gonna get this list. You're gonna get John Alex. David, for example, soon. These are account available, right? Okay. So, and you you have apps. Mm -hmm. So, show users would show all of these one by one. Inside the loop, if John is equal to Abbas, no. no. But if it is equal, but no does not mean that Abbas doesn't exist because you have to go and through check all of them. Pick Alex. Is Alex equal to Abbas? No. Is David equal to Abbas? No. If Susan equal to Abbas? No. It means what? Abbas is not there. So do finish create Abbas, right? Oh. Now let's say somebody types, for example, uh, Alex. Alex. Okay? You want to create a couple of Alex. Look over this. Is Alex equal John? No. Like this. If it is equal Alex, yes it is. Okay. If it is, don't create right in return. Okay. See that? So we need to search through all of them, and when the loop is exhausted, it means we have checked all of these, and it's still not there, time for creating it. Yes? Is there a way that you can make it take multiple arguments, like uh, create account Alex and Abbas? Of course you could do it. Of course you could do it. You, know, you could put as many as you want, right? So in this case, you need to have two loops. One loop over this, right? And one loop over that. Understand? It's a little bit more complicated, but it's possible. But this approach is very simple. Create one user at a time, okay? Much easier. But, so this could be implemented in any language which you want. Same logic, but syntax is different, right? Uh, anybody has any comment or question? Anyway, you guys always send me your problem. Whenever you have a problem, uh, send me your code. So I, was, I don't know what to do. This part doesn't work. This part, I'm gonna fix it for you and send you back, okay? No problem. Yes? How can I create um, n number of user accounts? Say, if I have a file of usernames that I, uh, for which I need to create an account, how can I do that? Let's say you have, the, you have a file uh, which has the names of all of the users that you want to create account. Okay? Shoot. No problem. Let's say this is a file. I'm going to make it here. Let's say you have a file. 
Okay. Uh, and these are the users. Good, bad, nice, and ugly. So these are the users. You want to create a class, right? Okay. First of all, we need to look over this. Pick element by element and create. Okay. Let me show you how to look over. Uh, in your, uh, if you want to use the uh, 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 shell script, you can do like that. What's the name of the file? My file. That's my file. We could say for, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, whatever. My user in dollar sign chat. Okay, let me tell you what it does. Chat is going to display the file. Right? Chat is going to display the file. Right? So, to really display it, every time one of these items is going to go to you, my user. For the first time, my user is going to be what? Good, next time bad, next time nice, next time ugly, right? And right over here, you're going to have create account, dollar sign, my user, done. Inside the loop, your content is calling what? calling the function that you have made. This function is creating one user at a time, right? Okay, so first of all, in this loop, my user is gonna what? Good. We're gonna put good into here. Good is gonna come over here, and I can't put good to be created. Next time, inside this loop, you're gonna pick what? Bad. You're gonna put bad here to create a comment for bad. This create a account for bad and super, super. Okay? Understand? So, of course, this is my approach. There are many approaches to that, okay? Maybe better than mine, maybe worse than mine. But this is, this is the way that I think about it uh, at this moment now. Make a very simple loop and do that. So, whenever you are working with the file, chat is going to display that, but instead of displaying that, it's going to go element by element into. This item, do. Sorry. I have a question because I haven't spun. If you run, if you're gonna run as a root, you have to put dot slash on the show users there, right? If you are run as a root. If you are running as a as a root, you want to put dot. You have to put dot and slash before the show users there, right? Well, you mean you mean right over here? Yeah. Well, uh, depends. Where this is, okay, depends on where this is. Because if, where is this? Is it is in your loca in current location or not? Yes, current location. If it is in current location, because uh, uh, if, I, if I left like just like that and I got error, it, I'll find again, it. I don't know because, you know why? Because uh, depending on how your path on your account is set. If the path on your account is set like that, path equals dollar sign path followed by period. This period says the current account is on the path as well, right? So if you have this, there is no need that you put dot slash should be there. Doesn't matter if you are root or what. Okay. On the sound pattern, uh, you could also put this line at the beginning of your script if you want. Oh. You don't have to put it in your startup. Put this at the beginning of the script. That means what? Put the current directory into the path. Now, so you don't need to uh, put dot forward slash in front of this, okay? 
on this topic. Anybody have any comments? Okay. Uh, if you remember, guys, uh, first of all, uh, some of you sent me email and asked me about when we are going to have a midterm exam. When are we going to have a midterm exam? Next week. Next week, right? Uh, midterm exam is, a, is next week. It is a, a, actually, this is the very first exam that we have, right? Now, in a midterm exam, there is no shell scripting. There is no Java programming. No, no. Okay. Just small questions and simple answers, right? Uh, it's open book, open notes, close friends, close neighbors, right? Follow it. And above all, close computers and any kind of electronic stuff, okay? Uh, so make sure that you don't use your computer or your cell phone or whatever at the time of exam. Ten questions are made for you, very short, about whatever I have covered, including whatever I'm going to cover tonight, okay? For example, uh, how to back up such and such database. You're going to say, I'm going to use uh, MySQL dump and do that, right? Understand? Or show me two ways to display all of your tables. Okay? You can use show all tables or something. Okay. This kind of question that I, I, you can find all of them in your tiny or large, or large uh, uh, notebooks, okay? Uh, or in your brain here, or in your book. Open book, in your book, as many books as you want, okay? Notes, everything. And uh, the entire exam is about only 15 to 20 minutes, not more than that. Very short, okay? So next week when we get together, uh, we're gonna go for the same, uh, uh, same, you know, we're gonna focus on the same. I'm gonna give you a lecture, same as tonight, and we're gonna go for a break. After the break, we get together, and I'm gonna start giving you the questions and answers, right? So very short, clear? After that, uh, two things will happen. After the midterm exam, two things. Some of you guys will do a good job. Some of you, do, some of you guys will do a bad job. That's the nature of any exam, okay? Good job does not mean that you are very good, and bad job does not mean that you are very bad. No, you can okay? Sometimes we lock. You know, this doesn't work like some of the exam, right? Okay. Uh, in all of the courses which I have been teaching so far, for many, many years, after the midterm exam, I give some extra credit projects, okay? Extra credit projects. Extra credit projects are for those who really want to raise their grade. They have not done homework assignment. They goofed up the midterm exam. They didn't do well on the midterm exam, and they need a better grade, okay? So they push it. If somebody does not need, has really high grades, doesn't have to do those extra credits. Extra credits are optional, not mandatory, okay? Just for Raise your grade, okay? And I'm gonna give you a couple of them uh, in this course, okay? So the very first one will be given to you after the midterm exam, right? And due date, due date for all of the extra credits is end of the semester. It means you have plenty of time to do that, okay? End of each. Follow, so you don't have to rush it, okay? Very relaxed environment to learn and be successful. Okay? Anybody has any comment or question about this thing like that? So we have midterm exam on Monday? Yes. And this is a multiple question? Ten questions on, on uh, midterm exam. Yes. Open book, open notes, right in this class. Is 
multiple choice question. No, not at all. There is no multiple choice, there is no true or false, no. This is the, uh, uh, the database administration, okay? Part of the question would be, uh, show me two ways to display all of the database. The other question would be, for example, uh, uh, all of the databases are all of the all of the databases and uh, 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 tables are corrupted. How to fix the problem? We need to recreate the entire database. Do you remember when we were installing uh, uh, MySQL? We created everything from scratch. We can't do that. For example, uh, how to uh, create the my.cnf? My.cnf again was created at the time of installation, if you remember. Should be in there. Okay, you're gonna have to give it. Have you signed up yet? This kind of things that I'm gonna, for example, uh, delete these tables. How to delete them? Okay, you're gonna use my. The MySQL dump followed by the table name, and psh, all of them gone. Okay? Clear? This is the type of the question that I have. Yes? Um, so, like, should we answer in a, like a short uh, paragraph, or write the actual command that we read? It's up to you. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, sometimes uh, you can write everything clearly in a way that I understand. Some students who are normally command oriented people. They just, by writing one command, they show the whole thing, right? Sometimes one simple picture worth thousands of others, right? So this is up to you. you could, if, for example, I'm asking you, show me two ways to create database. You could just show me by using a command, or you could say, I'm going to do this, do this, do this, do this. Okay. Anyway, I could accept both of them, right? Clear? Which one is easier for you? Okay? Did I answer your question? Yes. Any other comments or questions, guys? Okay? No, I have some. Let's get into it. Let's get the business, guys. Um, when you guys are uh, creating any database or using create database, okay? What is really happening in your computer? The database is getting created. But what is really created? What is the database physically? What is the database? Yeah. Fine. Database is a directory. Okay? So whenever you are creating any database, a folder will be created. Okay? A folder or a directory. So what database is in your uh, in your MySQL is a, is a, a directory or folder in Unix or Linux or any operating system. Okay? So, uh, let me put it here for you. So a database that you're creating is equivalent to a folder or the directory. Okay. Database? The same as okay. Now, the question is where this folder is located on your system on your computer. Let's say you are creating a database. Now you want to find where this folder is. How are you going to find that? You remember when we installed uh, MySQL in a class? Uh, we, we created a data directory. Data directory, do you remember? And we set data DIR to it. Do you remember? We created base DIR and data DIR, right? So wherever data DIR is pointing is the location of your 
location of your data. Let me show you how you could do that. You could do it like that. You could you could you could find out by using a command uh, show. variables, plural, uh, like that you know. Like that. This command, this command, show variables like that or the other, would give you the exact path for your data or this is the data that we created at the time of installation of MySQL. Do you remember? I remember it was, for us, it was a user local, do you remember? User local MySQL. Uh, something like that. Okay, if you remember. Okay? So if you run this, you're going to get something like this. Okay. Um, something like that. Use a local MySQL data. Something like that. Okay. It varies from system to system depending on how you have set it up. Okay. So the output of this line is going to be this. Now, let's say you have made a database, the name of the database is MyDB, right? So, MyDB is located right there. Okay, MyDB is a folder inside what? Inside your data data. See that? MyDB is the name of the database, it is inside that. So, if you want to see all of the databases, if you want to see all of the databases on your system, what you going to do? There are two ways you could do that. More than two ways. One is you just use a command show databases, right? You log into MySQL and type show databases, all of the databases on your system will be displayed. This is one way. The other way is without you, without getting into MySQL, you could go directly to here, like that, in this command, cd, followed by this, you get into this directory, and after that, type what? Type Alex, okay? And you're gonna see all of the databases here. CD to, to this, and after that, LS to see all of the databases. So I'm talking about Unix, Linux, and Mac. Mac OS X, okay? I don't talk about Windows. Okay. So CD to that, and LS is gonna see everything. So there are many ways. This is in an operating system level, and that is the other one that I showed you, the show databases, is in a logical level, okay? In your MySQL level, okay? Now, this is a directory, okay? So if, if I do it, I'm gonna get a listing of all of the uh, databases. One of them is what? MyDB, for example. Now, what's going to happen if I type db my db, right? Because the directory, I can cd2, right? Now I am cd2 and cd2 or switching into this folder, right? Inside the folder, what you're going to see is all of the tables that you have created, okay? So you could see all of the tables that you have created in this database. So if I type ls right over here again, what I'm gonna see 
is all of these fables that I have created. <coughs> Follow me? Let's say you have a table, you have a created, right? Let's say the name of the table is Dem. Dem, right? Or in, let's call it info. You have, a, you have made a table, it's called info, okay? So when you are typing ls, you're gonna see something like that. You're gonna see info dot frm info dot uh, what else? Info dot my d upper my d. I'm gonna tell you what it is. And also you're gonna get uh, my i info my eye. It means any table that you are creating are equivalent, well, is equivalent to three different data files. In other words, for each table that you are creating, three data files are getting created. Three data. My table was what? What's called info, right? The name of my table is info. But for info, three files are created. You as a DBA need to know what these files are. Okay? Oh. The first file, info.frm. FRM stands for format. Format. Okay, format. Okay. This file gives you information about structure of your table. Size of the table, number of fields in your table, type of the fields in your table, and stuff like that. Structure of your table. Follow me? So FRM gives you the structure of it. Info.myd. MyD stands for data. My data. This file with dot myd, myd is an uppercase, is showing you any kind of data in your table. When you have a, when you have a table, you're going to put a bunch of data in it, right? So all of the data in your table goes into here. So structure goes here, data goes to here. Okay? Okay, is it in, uh, data in, uh, as a table or as a row or as a value? Well, my dear, uh, none of these files are text. For security, these are all binary. It means if you use cat command or vi command or anything to look at them, you just see junk. Typically, these are not text files for security. Okay, these are all highly compressed files. This were compressed because they want to make it smaller, okay, and wider for security. Okay, but all of your data is represented in this file. Structure represented this file, and finally, if uh, uh, normally uh, when you are creating a table, you create some index and indexes too. Index of your table is going into here. I stands for index. So index file, data file, structure or format. Format. Data index. What index does? Good question. Normally, we are creating index for efficiency, okay? To speed up search. Let's say you have very large table, including, let's say, tens of thousands or millions of people, okay? And you are searching for something. Let's say you are searching for specific record of such and such person, 
okay? If you have created index for your table, searching would be very fast. If you have not created index, searching would be pretty slow, okay? So indexing a table is one of the approaches to speed up the search operation, okay? How do you how do you uh, if I don't create a special index? If you don't have a special index, normally you don't have index. Okay. Yes. This file is and this system. file is empty. So this file is empty if you do not have any index. In some versions of MySQL, even this file doesn't exist if you do not have index. Okay? Depending on what version, okay? Either this file is empty, because you don't have any index for your table, or this file doesn't exist. Either this or that, okay? But in the latest versions of, uh, of uh, MySQL, this file always exists, okay? Uh, one more thing I need to tell you, uh, in, in, you know, just to add a little bit more information about this. Uh, tables in uh, MySQL are using special engine. Engine, okay? Uh, engine is a way that you, is, is, a, is a software that controls the behavior of your table, okay? Uh, by default, when you are creating any table, the engine that is responsible for that table is called MyISAM. MyISAM. MyISAM is the name of the engine, okay? I'm not talking about engine is related in this course, okay? The name of the engine responsible for controlling the behavior of your team, okay? Uh, one of the best and fastest engine that we are using these days is called InnoDB. You're gonna learn about it later. InnoDB, okay? That is a very modern engine and uh, uh, we are using. There are many different engines available. One of them is called Maria, Maria. The other one is called Memory Engine. Uh, 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 there are many others. Uh, but uh, soon I'm going to talk about all of these engines, okay? So depending on what kind of engine you are using, some of these files would, would not exist. For example, if you are using InnoDB, uh, my eye doesn't exist. Okay, so if these are the, the default is this my eye sound. So whatever I have covered so far belong to the my eye sound engine, which is a default engine. Okay, if you guys want to use another engine. You could specify this when you are uh, creating your table. You, you do it like that. You say, uh, you create here for you. You say create table, uh, for example, uh, whatever, okay? Whatever you want to create, type your fields and type of them and stuff like that. And finally, outside, you could say, Engine equals InnoDB. Okay? If you do it like that, it means you want this table that you have created, you, know, it, it, you want this table, you uh, 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 actually use InnoDB instead of my ISA. If you don't specify that, default is my ISA. But you could specify what engine. You could say engine equals Maria. And 
this came to Maria and Jane. Okay. Uh, and this is very interesting subject, and soon I'm going to talk about that. But it's nothing to do with the subject of Kuna. I just want to answer your question, okay? That uh, what these are. So, uh, normally three files are created for each table, okay? Uh, uh, FRM, MyZ, and MyPath. Okay. And these files are not really uh, uh, text files. They are uh, not readable, okay? Unless you are, you are using some tools to analyze them and read them, which I'm going to talk about those tools a little bit later in this course, okay? How to analyze these, okay? Now, uh, one of the reasons that I brought up this subject is uh, you uh, need to know, um, uh, because if you remember, the subject is backup. We have not finished the subject of backup. We started talking about backup last time. Do you remember that? And we are still in a subject of backup. So whatever I covered as an introduction relates to, actually, these stuff all relate to the subject of backup. Now I'm going to resume to the backup subject and taking that, taking advantage of whatever I have covered. Let's say you guys want to make a backup, right? One way to do backup is using the operating system command, right? Uh, we have several operating system commands available. One of them to do the backup is TAR. TAR. It's called tape archive. You could use TAR to do the backup, right? For example, uh, I'm asking you to backup all of our database. Okay, all of our database. We know that all of our databases are located here, right? So what we do is just take it here and say cd user local here, because all databases are over there. And after that, I'm going to make a backup of all of the databases. I'm going to do it like that. Uh, cd. I can use CDF, I can use yeah, yeah. CDF is fine. Uh, followed by period. Okay? So, uh, my mistake. I forgot to put a name. What is the name of my archive? I should put it like that. I could say, for example, my backup followed by. Okay, now the period is very important. Uh, that simply means backup all of my databases, okay? Because the content of this directory is nothing but all databases, right? So what is a database and all of the tables will be what? Will be back. Okay? Let's say I'm asking you only backup for example, uh, uh, one database only. Backup, only one database, right? Not all of them. And that is my DB. I have a database called DB, and I want to back up that database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it like that. CD to uh, my DB, go to that directory. And after I use what? R dash C D F followed by my backup followed by period and everything will be back. Okay. If you want to Press the file, I should highly recommend you, because when you're doing the backup, these files are gigantic, right? Especially if you have too many tables or many stuff. So you'd better use the option dash Z CDF, 
Z option means compress your archive. Compress. So you are compressing your archive. Okay. Your archive is going to be much smaller. Okay. Now you can, if you want to restore them, you have now your archive here in this file, right? You could, in order to restore it, just go somewhere or back up or restore. To restore, you're going to do it like that. R dash Z X Z F followed by uh, my and everything will be restored back. Okay? So that is opposite of this. It's going to create archive, and that's going to restore it back for you. Okay? So this is done in the operating system level. Sometimes we call it physical backup. Physical backup. It's not a logical backup. It's physical backup. This is the fastest way that you could do the backup. In fact, because you are directly working with your files, right? So fastest. Okay. Now, let's say I am asking you to back up only one. No, not only one table. Let's say I have some tables and I want to do the backup, right? Let's do it this way. I'm going to clear. I'm going to answer to all your questions in the later. Let me just cover this, and after that, I'm going to answer to all of your questions. Write down your questions and don't push it, okay? Let's do this for you guys. Let's say I have a database. This database is called my db1. This is the name of my database, right? In my db1, I have three tables. EMP1, EMP2, and personal. Okay? In this database, I have three tables, namely EMP1, EMP2, and personal. These are three different tables. Now, I am asking you to do a physical backup. Not logical, physical. It means get into the operating system level and do the back, right? So what we need to do, first of all, you need to go to here, okay? The very first thing that they're going to do is you're going to say CD user local MySQL data my db1. You're going to get into your database directory. Okay? So far, so good. After that, you're going to type tar dash zxz Followed by any backup file which you want. For example, you could say my new yup, my new backup. Followed by Start because each table has 
bunch of files, right? So for example, for EMP1, yeah, EMP1.frm, emp myd, emp1.myr. So, repo that, repo this, repo this. All of them will be backed up into my new app. See that? No, you. Uh, those of you, those of you who know Java, okay, uh, or you have taken a course uh, 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 Java with me, uh, should be familiar with jar command. Jar command is the same as tar command, but made by Java and is better to use. So instead of tar, you could use jar and you're gonna create a jar file, okay? Jar file, your jar command is doing the archiving for you as well as tar does, okay? And one more thing I will tell you. Normally, the name of your uh, uh, backup that you're creating, it means the name of archive, should have some extension, okay? The extension for tar is this. You just do TGZ. TGZ stands for TAR plus zip file. Because you are TARing and zipping. Zipping is done by what? By ship by dash Z. Zip means you are compressing. So whoever looks at this file, the R, oh, this file is tarred and zipped. If you are not zipping, your file should be TG. my new. Up dot tar. Okay? If you are if you are not zipping. Whoever looked at this file will see that this is a tar file. But if you're zipping, make sure that your extension will be changed from R to TG. These are standard, internationally used all over the world. Don't think I'm making up an EP, no. Okay? So whoever in the world looks at this would know what it is, looks at that would know what that is. Okay? Now I am ready to answer the question. Do you have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, which do you know when to choose? Do you, when, when do you know when to choose a logical backup or a physical backup? Well, this is a matter of choice. Uh, some people are comfortable with MySQL command and not really comfortable with the operating system command. So they, 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 they normally decide to use MySQL. This is one fact. The other fact is, if speed, speed is your concern, it means if you have very really limited time to do a very large backup, definitely this approach is faster than using MySQL dump. MySQL dump, as I discussed last time, would take hours for you to do the backup and it takes hours for you to restore. But by using TAR, at most one minute, at most one minute, compare one minute against hours, okay? If you have time, go for either one of them. If you don't have time, you should go for physical approach. To do like daily, monthly, regular backups, what do you use? Like Again, that? for daily, uh, weekly, monthly, full backup, partial backup. Again, you could use either this approach. I mean, how do you schedule it? Is it to continue? Well, the scheduling is done by uh, by some uh, by uh, depending on the operating system. Okay, but uh, uh, Unix, Linux, and Mac have uh, some mechanism that we could uh, do 
that on the exact certain time and certain day, such a such, such, such job will be done. Okay. Uh, anybody know the name of it? Cron. Cron. Yeah. This is actually this is here. Yeah, this is Cron is one of them exactly. Okay. Cron job. Cron. Cron is. Uh, a mechanism in Unix, Linux, and Mac that all DBAs and sysadmins are using when they want the backup start at certain time. Let me, let's don't talk about backup. Let's do it this way. Let's say, let's say, uh, every, every day, or every week, or every two months, or every month, it's only on your company, you need to create Bunch of users. Bunch of users you need to create, right? So the names of all of the users go to a table, go to a file, as you as you asked me. Names of all of users go to a file, okay? Available. All you need to do is just create a task. You could automate it. You could put the command that you made, you could your your shell script that you made, you could put it into a cron file, okay? In a cron tab file. And after that, in a cron tab file that you're creating, you could say uh, at exactly what day, what time, what hour, what minute, what second, you need to start that job, okay? So this automatically will be done exactly, for example, in my company, at two in the morning, we need to do the cleanup. It means get rid of all of the junk tables and stuff like that. Cleanup is done at two in the morning. So we have made a script it's called cleanup. Okay? The DBA is made a script called cleanup. So that DBA put the cleanup into this file and that's it. And set it to exactly at two in the morning. Every morning at two, cleanup automatically will be done. So when you get to, to work every morning at eight, nine, ten o'clock, you see oh, all of those junk tables are gone. Okay? So the contents of the cron task is nothing but a bunch of different tasks, different jobs that need to be automated and need to be done in a daily basis, in an hourly basis. For example, in my company, every minute we need to do something. Every minute. Some jobs should be done in minute after minute. So all of those jobs that should be done every minute is in cron. So you have a mechanism that says every minute do that. Okay? It's gonna do. Okay? This is one, uh, one facility. There is another facility called Act Facility. Again, Act Facility is available in Unix, Linux, and Mac. It means at certain dates, certain times, certain minutes, certain seconds, certain seconds, and so forth, some jobs should be done. Okay? So either this or that. Okay? Any questions so far? No questions? Okay. So, oh, uh, I have one. Go ahead. So, what is the difference between the ZX to the ZV? ZC? Well, I use ZC. Well, C means create. Oh, X to uh, create or execute. Z, X means X. extract. Extract, okay. Extract, it means I mean, right get from it. C means create. Okay, so you either create archive or extract stuff from it. Okay. <coughs> okay. Anybody has any comment questions so far? Okay. Now, uh, when you are uh, installing your MySQL as it is, and when you are starting up. MySQL, okay? MySQL is started up and running up. If you go and check uh, your, uh, check uh, to see 
names of the databases which are created for you and what these are and stuff like that, you're gonna see two databases are available, two. So whenever you're installing any MySQL, two databases automatically are available. One is called MySQL database, which has a bunch of important tables, user tables, and stuff like that, okay? And the other one is called information schema. I can tell you what it is. Information schema. Information underscore schema. Information schema. Information schema is very interesting database. The database, the name of the database. It's very interesting database. Okay. Information schema, first of all, is called virtual database. Virtual database. Information schema is the virtual database. Why do we call it virtual? Because it does not exist in reality. Okay? If you go to this location, which has all of your databases, you cannot find it. This place, which is a data directory, has all of the databases that are created by you or automatically but you cannot find information schema of it. Why? Because this database exists, but this is a virtual. What does that mean, virtual? It means this database only is created inside the memory. This is your hard disk. You know that this is part of your hard disk, okay? This is not in a hard disk. Information schema, is a database created in the memory, okay? In the memory. This database has approximately 40, 40, 40 tables on it. There are approximately 40 tables inside information schema, okay? All of these tables are resided in the memory. None of them are in your hard disk. You cannot find any of them here. All of them are in the memory. Okay? It simply means as long as your MySQL database is up and running, This database and all of its tables exist, are available in the memory. But as soon as you shut down your MySQL database, information schema evaporates, goes away, disappears from the memory. There is no such a thing existing. Following? This is the reason that we, we call it a virtual database. Okay? Okay? Now, the very good question is, okay, what is inside that? What is inside this? Very important, okay? Information schema consists of metadata. Metadata. Let me tell you what metadata is, okay? Information schema has meta data. Okay. Meta What is metadata? Metadata refers to a kind of data that is just about my SQL, not about your table, not about my table. Only about my system, okay? Systems related data. 
systems related data. In some textbook or manual, metadata are referred to as dictionary data. Dictionary data. In Oracle, we are using dictionary. Okay? For example, you want to know how many tables are on the system. This is a metadata. You want to know, for example, the names of all of the system related tables. You want to know the exact number of views on your system. You want to know, uh, for example, the process ID of, of all of the users on the system. Process ID. Okay? You want to know for how long. For example, uh, this lady has been using MySQL without interruption. It means when she logged in. Okay? This kind of data okay, are collectively called metadata. And information schema is the place that you could look for this kind of information. If I ask you, give me a listing of all of the tables on your system, all of the tables, very easily, you could go to the information schema and display them, which I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay? Understood? Okay. So we go for a short break, about 10 minutes. I've got tired. Needs a bit of energy. And after that, we come back and I talk about information in more detail. Very, very interesting. Okay? Anybody didn't get your homework?